uh, somehow at one point, not here, not today, but food for thought, um, Ram and everybody else, food for thought. I know you're saying, let's just leave it, let it be, but then you're going to have these discrepancies. How do we come together as one? And I think food for thought to take away from here, how do we come together as a Pakra community to kind of get rid of the discrepancy? Uh, Fatih. John. <laughs> I have a mic. Yay. Um, so I think that the competitive circuit as a whole has actually pushed the two farms together. At least, if I can't talk for other teams, I can speak on behalf of our team. Because like when we started in 2004, it was like the generation of Vibe and UBC girls. So it was all you know, modern and clean and crisp and you know everything that was more um, favored in like more modern circles. But when it comes to like where we go to compete now and what other teams are doing. Like we've actually had outside help, like Shawn and Job has helped us, SFBC boys have helped us, um, like kind of make our, bring our routine a little bit back more to the traditional side. So I think that like when you go to a competition, like if you go as a completely modern team and you're going to a little bit more traditional competition yeah, what you does push that mean? yourself what does modern mean Can well it's the rubrics right like yeah. you you kind of look at the rubrics to where you're you're going like if you're going to a competition that's got lots and lots of points allocated to things outside of the traditionality um aspect like in terms of gimmicks opening outfits this and that like whatever it is outside of the traditionality aspect that would be considered like a more modern competition at least for us but like i like in terms of pushing the envelope like ram said um, I think that the competitive circuit is really pushing teams kind of outside of their comfort zone, especially nowadays, which is actually really cool because, you know, like, um, Mandeep, like, you can talk about, like, the competition that you and I competed in Bruin, WSA. It was a little, like, we did a Westside Alliance, so it was a real push for some of the girls on the team to kind of amalgamate into these different styles and just with social media, YouTube, competitions across the country, across both countries where you're competing against people you normally would never even see you're i find teams are really pushing themselves outside of their comfort zone and it's bringing everybody together which i think is a really positive so it's positive thing. yeah and right. so um can i go sorry i don't know what's talking. Oh, yeah um and i think as the time goes by there's gonna be a change i mean we say we are folk but if i show the same routine to my dad my dad used to dance in a team if i show him the same routine it's a folk routine but he's gonna say this is not pangra so I think as the next generation comes up, we're gonna say the same thing that, you know, that this is not folk, but they're gonna think that's the way it should be. It's just generation gap that's gonna be there. Doesn't matter what you do. I'm, even when they used to dance, it was more about just enjoying it. Now it's more kind of, you know, following this rubric and following the moves everyone has to do the same thing. Before it was more enjoyment. Now it's more, and I think with time, it's gonna evolve a little bit more and get more of a, more of a dance than an art form. But it, I mean, you have to accept it. If our parents couldn't really change anything with the society, I mean, there, I think there is gonna be a change and we just have to accept it. Ram? Uh, I'm just gonna just briefly preface what I'm gonna say is I think if everyone just looks, like uh, I think, uh, one of the personal examples for me that I can think about is uh, there's a video of Srdinth Bandrakia giving his bulia, and it's like a grainy video. It's, I don't know how many people watch it. I'm sure like most of the people have watched it. And the people dancing in the background are doing like 32 beats of chal, and they do 32 beats of jogani, and then they just hold the kunda up. And that kind of dancing was like something cool. Like you see everyone in the, in the audience like hooting and hollering. They're like, oh my God, this is sick. And then you watch it now and people are like, that is boring, why am I watching it? I'm like, dude, it's a good video. But that kind of thing is lost and I think if you go back and you ask these people um, what Bhangra is like today, they're probably going to be amazed slash like, they're probably just going to look at the dance and be blown away because of how simple it was back in the day. Um, I think another thing I could do is I could probably go up right now in the front and I could probably just dance like five or ten steps and I could pull the audience and ask you to give me step names. And you probably are going to give me a different name, depending on, you know, what type of team you, what type of, type of team you are. I mean, like Fusla, there's like Fusla Jumar, like everyone knows these step names. But once you start getting into the nitty gritty details, uh, I know there was a Vishta Dewaras video that was posted on BTF a couple of weeks ago with the step names. 
and I haven't heard half of the step names. And some of the step names that I've learned in one way are com given completely different names in this video. So you get all these, you get all this fracture, and I think um, even with the judging rubric, you look at the judging rubric, and I think a big thing that's been an issue now at competitions and. Um, don't get me wrong, I, I think judges are awesome, you know, I've judged before, so I guess in, or in a way I'm saying I'm awesome, but um, <laughs> I, think, I think a big thing to take away is judges tend to take the rubric and do whatever they want with it, and it's very hard, it's very hard for teams, and I think part of the reason why we get so animated is because we look at the judge, we look at the rubric, and we look at um, what has happened in the past, and we try to put these blinders on, we're like, alright, this is what, to, what we're going to expect. And I think a lot of the reason why there's so much angst about with this modern traditional bunger debate is because we go to these competitions and someone throws us a curveball and they're like, oh, this team placed. And they're like, oh, we look at the past three winners of this competition. This team would never have placed there. And you ask the question of like, why? What's going on? And I think that's part of the reason why this debate's being brought up is because there are a lot of things that are going out of control slash like, you know, people can't explain these things properly. And we, I think we tiny, tight, kind of use these buzzwords. Like traditionality and modern have, have now become buzzwords. And even, you, I mean, you were right, you just asked someone, you asked Barthi to explain what that is. And it's like very hard to, to give a concrete, like eight word definition that is gonna be like appeasing to everybody. So basically we've, we've come up with these buzzwords because of competitions, but essentially, are we gonna continue the thing is, like, I understand what Baji is saying, like, some of you may agree. If we, if we change Bangladesh so much, and we evolve it so much, and we give it all these different styles, and we all have different names for all these different moves, like, I was West Side Alliance, like, stuff that we call Fasla, Karen, they call something, like, totally else, man, like, <laughs> Flying Backwards, Penguin, like, I don't know, all these names, right? So, flying like, if we evolve it so much, then really, what is going to be left that's authentic about it? I just want you to take that away from this conversation. Like what, what, oh. well, okay. if Udom has something to say at the end there too. Well, I think at the end of the day, what we as a niche in the Bhangra community need to decide is how far we want Bhangra to reach. And if you want to take it to a place where it's a synonymous word in the dictionary of anyone who has any knowledge of dance or music, you have to take it to them in a way that's accessible to everyone. We as representatives of Punjabi culture, we may appreciate modern, or we may appreciate traditional, or we may want to keep it in its truest state. But is that a state that it's going to be recognizable to, to somebody you know, in Japan? Probably not necessarily. If I was someone who, if I was someone who'd never seen Bhangra before, and I don't know if I would remember a routine that was purely in its truest state of Bhangra versus something that gave me some gimmicks to remember it by, something that gave me some high octane energy to remember it by, something that gave me something else to remember it by. A prime example of this is the fact that we have some of the most renowned artists in the world. The music they create is beautiful and lyrical and poetic, but the first introduction that the mainstream had to Bhangra was when it was remixed with Knight Rider. So it's a matter of how far we want to take its reach. Do we want to take it to a world stage where every person in the world knows what Bhangra is? Or do we want it to be something that we keep in its truest state, but it doesn't reach all the way across the globe? But then also not be able to define it. Because with so many different styles and making it accessible to the world, I think we're also losing the definition, essentially, of then of what is Bhangra. And that's maybe something that we all have to come together to define. Somebody in the audience? There's someone in the audience? <laughs> All right, so the whole question of making it of authenticity is so difficult and I feel like it's like holding sand in your hand. For, so for each person in this room, what is folk, what is modern, what is, what is fusion is gonna be different, it's subjective regardless. So I feel like that question itself is creating those factions of what is modern because none of us, we can agree on some points but it's always gonna be sort of a Venn diagram sort of business where we some there are some moves that we think um, are all folk and then there are some moves that we think are too modern and this is gross and you can't go 16 and I can't believe your Vardy look like this and there are going to be divisions regardless of what we say so I think the idea of trying to get to some sort of 
golden age of, oh my God, we're losing our authenticity. Like, you know, this person's Seattle looks crazy. How could you do it like that? Is is silly. We have to, it's almost like people saying, you know, it's the same way that if Shakespeare listened to English today, he would think we're all talking like monkeys. He would think we're ridiculous. So you can't hold culture in your hand. It's gonna evolve regardless of what you do, especially now that we're in the digital age. We have access that um, people 10 years ago did not have. I mean, a lot of us, if people who were born in like 1991, are literally born with the internet. <laughs> so you, you can watch um, videos from India, you can watch Indian teams dancing, you can watch teams from California dancing, you can watch teams from Vancouver dancing. And I think the beauty of that is that even seeing all these, having seen all these videos, you can still develop your own flavor of what you think, you know, folk or what you think modern or fusion looks like. And that's not bad necessarily. Also, I think it's very, it's unhelpful for us to think of our definitions outside the context, context of rubrics. So I feel like a lot of it goes, um, has to do with judging as well. So it'd be beautiful if we could go to competitions and it could be like the IBC and we're all just, you know, jiving and talking about Bhangra and like hanging out and seeing how we all feel about music and, you know, making friends, but it's not that way. The investment is so intense and I feel like it's different when you're competing within a very small, almost cult status thing, whereas now Bhangra is so huge. Like I feel like anyone has at least heard some riff on Bhangra, like some sort of South Asian music within um, American music because it's appropriate so often because it's, you know, as we know, awesome. So I feel like um, it's not, there's value in that. <laughs> there's value in um, our differences as opposed to thinking that we're gonna get to some sort of golden ideal of like, this is the perfect way that we should have done this. So, so we're gonna take that and move into our next topic and thank you for that. So clearly everybody has their own perspectives and it's just a matter of going to these competitions and having to dance a certain way because the rubric says so. But then it's also what I'm hearing is just you, yourself, your team, you as an individual dancer, you know, how do you define Bhangra? What is it to you, right? But at the same time, I also hear the other side, which is we can keep defining Bhangra as we want unto ourselves and how we want to present it or how we want it to be represented. But then if someone asks us, you know, um, essentially what is, a, what is Jummar, we're all going to describe it in our own way. But then what about the essence in which it was started? And that's all I'm asking us to think about moving forward. Uh, last comment on this topic before we move on. Thanks. Uh, okay, <laughs> just a couple quick points. I think one thing, uh, this whole, I think we can agree that like these words are very problematic in themselves. I think rhetoric in many ways shapes conversations. I think these words are just like traditional folk. They carry a lot of burden with them. I think when I started as a freshman, um, we weren't very good, as I mentioned before. Uh, and, and no, I was really into uh, watching Empire videos because I just came out of high school and I was KJ and then Empire. And then, uh, but then like the captains in the team were this whole thing like, oh dude, but they're not folk. They're not traditional. And I think I, as a freshman, took solace in the fact that, oh, it's okay, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're cool entertaining all, but they're not folks, so they're not, they're not on our level, um, even though we're not doing folk stuff 